Howdy. Today, I'm reviewing the second movie Walmart exclusive that I own, Grindcore. Don't know if I'll buy any more, but you never know. It's said that he's named after a music genre inspired by death metal, hardcore punk, and so on, and his bio notes that he's as loud as the music he's into, and possibly violent, for reasons you'll see later. Being a repaint of Cybertron Landmine, his alt mode is a payloader, and a robust one at that. While perhaps not as model-like as Big Daddy, it's still highly detailed. You've got hydraulic cylinders, smokestacks and headlights, there's paint on the ladders, cab windows, and especially inside the shovel. One look at the deco and you're probably thinking Constructicon, and while he is predominantly green, he's actually an homage to the Micromaster Crushball, minus the purple shovel as that'd look really out of place on this toy. I should preface that this was a mold I wanted for a while, but I couldn't find Landmine for a reasonable price at the time. If I had, I'd have probably gone for him instead, because honestly, this colour scheme, while not awful, is kinda bland. Like half-tracks, construction vehicles aren't exactly flashy, but the fact remains, it's still dull. That said, check the red and silver paint inside the shovel. It's supposed to be rust, but yeah. It looks like... something else. In fact, if they went for a deco like, say, the X-Force repaint of Crossover's Wolverine, this would have flown off the shelves. Aside from the working shovel arm, the spring-loaded missile launcher can plug onto the back of the vehicle. His cyberkey gimmick is seemingly reserved for robot mode. Speaking of which... Deco aside, the robot mode is where the figure really shines. Based on his bio, Grindcore comes across as someone who could withstand a lot, and Landmine's gruff, tough design fits said persona to a T, from the overall girth to the shovel halves on his forearms, and the cab which makes an excellent chest. And despite what I just said, the figure looks a little less bland with the additional red, though it's still not exactly dynamic. For all his bulk, Grindcore actually has very good articulation. He has hinges, ball joints and swivels in pretty much all the right spots, and it's what pulls him ahead of Big Daddy, if only slightly. On to his gimmick. Fold up the backpack, like so, plug the cyber key into each hubcap, twist, and blades fold out from the tyres. They don't do anything, but look cool nonetheless. Also, the discs from the rear section and the tyres are all conjoined as such that when you spin one wheel, you spin them all. It makes sense for Landmine since in Cybertron he would generate whirlwinds this way. Anyone heard of repurposing, where a toy can be used to represent multiple characters? Well, this was repurposed as the evil Autobot Scoop from Funpub's Shattered Glass Comics. Just paint the Autobot symbol purple and you have one of your own. They did that with a lot of these movie store exclusives, if only so people would actually buy them. I must admit, though Big Daddy is a much cooler repaint, Grindcore, with his better articulation and all-around awesome design, is the superior figure. Of course, this is just one use of the mould. There's also Landmine, or Guardshell if you're from Japan. But the best looking version in my opinion is Botcon's Axelon Rhinox, and if you can afford it, you're clearly rich. If not, then this'll do just fine. Till all are one.